Um, those eagle-eyed amongst you, if you can see the three darker buckets on the left-hand side, um, what we do is we gather the data around your historical project performance. So, as I said, which projects um, delivered to time, to budget, uh, uh, used what resources. We then connect that with the uh, PPM tools. And what I would say about PPM tools, it's been really interesting for us. We have found that some clients don't have a PPM tool, you know, don't have a central function, don't have a PMO in place to look across their projects. And we're now actually having to work with them almost from a consultancy point of view as to how do you establish that central function? You've got other clients which are still using Excel and SharePoint, some, you know, some very legacy old technology or Google Sheets or something. Others have written their own PPM tools and then others have bought something more off the shelf, you know, that the, the, probably the biggest in the corporate world still remains uh, Project Online, which is uh, um, MS Project, but at the portfolio level. So we're finding that we've had to create a product that needs to interface with all these different types of PPM interfaces. Now, if you recall what I said about the foundations for success, there are also other data points, you know, so for example, things like business change, business requirements, benefits, which you wouldn't necessarily always find the, the right data points within a PPM tool. So we might have to connect with other systems as well. So we bring that set of data and we've created a, a cloud environment uh, um, with a, a proprietary data model um, within it. And when you once you've got that data, that allows us to start analyzing that data. It allows us to start giving the client a set of insights through some you know beautiful looking dashboards. And, and even more importantly, it allows us to start applying prediction. And then all of that is to drive management action. So, so in terms of how does it work, there's, there's, there's a five step process. Um, what we do is the first step is we identify what data um, exists and also what the quality of that data is and where it's held, you know, which systems um, that, that, that exist. We then go through an ETL process and that ETL process is a, a grand way of saying data preparation. You know, so you're cleansing the data, you're getting the best data possible because, you know, you want to, you're going to base some decisions on this legacy data. You know, so the old adage of garbage in, garbage out still holds true when you're trying to base decisions on historical data. Like I said, it then comes into a proprietary data model. Once it's in the proprietary data model, that's where the cleverer stuff comes in. There's, there's two types of analysis we do around predicting a project outcome. The first bit is around something called data analytics. And we, we are, are actually using a, a product from Microsoft, Power BI, which allows you to interpret that data and present the data. And, and for want of a better term, we've written some algorithms that allows you to, to apply that to that project. The other stuff, um, and, and I'll let Ming pick up on this later in the conversation, is about machine learning. In other words, the machine is learning from the data within the system. So collectively, both the data analytics and the machine learning is then combined to predict an outcome of the project. Now, just before we move on from this slide, I just want to again just reiterate this point about the journey and this reiterate this point about the maturity capability of an organization. What we're finding with our clients is that the data is in a poor state. And, you know, some of these clients, you know, you would expect them to be more mature than they actually are. So, you know, so one large client, uh, uh, um, for example, has no resource management system in place. So on the basis that you accept that um, resource management is a key element of project success, what we're doing with those guys is trying to work out, well, what is your plan about implementing a resource management system? Once that's implemented, roll forward, it starts then generating data that we can then bring into the data model in the future. So thank you, Ming.